Hey everyone, how's it going? Kermode here, back with another tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys five ways to make your sounds punchier. I know for myself early on in my production journey, the word punchy came a lot, came up a lot. Make your drums punchier, make your bass punchier. And although I do actually think for a time, drums were actually too punchy, especially in my own music, um, I still think it's important you learn how to make your sounds punchy. So I'm gonna show you guys five ways you can do that in Ableton right now. So I've got a snare here. I'm, it's actually pretty punchy, but there's always room to make it punchier. So the first technique I wanna show you guys is using the main way you control dynamics, a compressor. The reason I wanna go over the compressor is a lot of people I find still just don't fully grasp all of it, especially early on in production. So, you know, let's demystify how to make something punchy with a compressor. So typically, when you think of a compressor, what happens is the volume goes over the threshold and you start to compress that volume down. Now the thing is though, a compressor isn't instant unless it's a limiter, so usually a little bit of audio sneaks through. And the more audio that sneaks through is based off the attack, because if the attack is slow, more audio can punch over the threshold. So what we can do is we can use this combination of the attack time and the ratio to push down the body of the, the drum while the transient sneaks through. And, th and then after we apply makeup gain to that to kind of bring everything up, but when you bring everything up, that transient that snuck through gets louder. And the louder a transient is, the punchier something will be. So let's do that with this snare here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compress the sound. And you can hear it, there's still a bit of a snap there, even though we're compressing it quite aggressively. So what I'm gonna do is the more I increase this attack, the more of that snap comes through. Now we can add makeup gain. And let's make up Let's make this up until the body sounds about the same level as what it was before or similar. Yeah, so the body sounds about the same. But listen to hear much of how much of the snap went through. Now, yes, we did turn up our overall gain here, but that's kind of okay. That's what dynamic is. If you're trying to make something punchier, it needs to be more dynamic. So Yes, this technique turns it up, but you're turning up the transient. And if it go turns up too much, you can always dial back the attack or lengthen it to get more of the body back. So that's tip one, using a compressor to make something punchier. Now the next technique works especially well for kick drums, but I'll still show you here on the same snare since we're used to hearing it. And that's adding a pitch envelope into a sound. And the reason we wanna add a pitch envelope is because when something goes from a high pitch to a low pitch really quickly, th that can give, and that does give, the feeling of punch. So for example, if I were to grab operator here and we're playing a basic sine wave, watch what happens as I increase the distance of this pitch envelope and I lengthen the decay just a bit. Hear that punch? I'll add some harmonics in for those without the speakers that can go that low. Hear that? Dow, 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 dow. That quick do, do comes from the pitch drop. So with our snare here, what we're gonna do is we can do we can add a pitch envelope into it by throwing it into a sampler. And a lot of you are already doing your drums in drum rack. And when you're in a drum rack cell, you can have any instrument in there. So we could have sampler. And if we head over to the pitch envelope section, we can start small, you know, let's start with an octave, but watch what happens when there's a quick decay. Adds a little tick to the sound. Here we got a little click there. So that click is based off how far you're traveling and how quickly. If you slow it down, it'll change how the snap feels. Now be careful if the decay is too slow, you're gonna be at a high pitch for too long and you're gonna play through the sample too quickly and you're gonna mess up the pitch. It's not gonna be very nice. That's not really nice, but if we tighten it,
that's nice. We can add a little bit of click. Um, and again, this sounds really nice with a kick drum. Let's actually grab one. So without the pitch envelope, we have a pretty soft sounding kick drum here. Now watch how much this pitch envelope can help it. Hear that knock? And see how much it changes the front tone of the drum? It's crazy. So taking so taking your drum, throwing it back in a sampler, some sort of sampler that has a pitch envelope, and then you can do this. I don't recommend drawing in a pitch envelope in the actual audio clip because for that to work, that would apply you have some sort of warp mode on, and no warp mode is really going to benefit your drum. So I, I would kind of stay away from doing a pitch envelope there, but in a sampler, is a good place to do it. Next up, I have to talk about Ableton's Drum Bus. Drum Bus is a really cool kind of multifunctional device that has a bit of distortion or saturation in there. It has a transient designer. It has a sub synthesizer. But what we're going to focus on is just this transient knob here. So this transient knob works a little differently than you would think. It doesn't really turn up the transients so much as it it's actually kind of playing with the body of the sound, at least that's what I'm hearing, where as you turn it to the left, you're turning down the body, therefore the, the transient is louder because there's more dynamic, where vice versa, when you go this way, you're turning up the body, but I do find when you go this way, sometimes the transient gets a little snappier, so maybe I'm not 100% on it, but I feel like this turns down the body this way, this turns up the body this way, or turns up the tail this way. And let's check that out on our snare here. So we have our snare. And when we slap this to the left, you hear how that just got tighter, techier, punchier? So that adds punch by shortening the tail. Well, this turns up the tail, but again, sometimes you get a little bit of a snap in the front. See how that's snappy and taily? So this one is kind of punchier, but less dynamic. This one's punchier by being more dynamic. But both have a significant effect on the transient compared to being in the middle here. And the beautiful thing is drum bus is not just limited to drums. I put this on bass. I put this on vocals sometimes. You never really know what's going to sound good with drum bus on it. I recommend just trying it. It's a really awesome device. Next up in the fifth technique is transient separation with a gate. Now I've done videos on this before, but it doesn't hurt to go over it pretty quickly. So what is really powerful about Ableton's gate is what you can do is isolate the transient using the gate. So we're gonna you know, play with the settings here. Just try and get the loudest part of the sound nice but watch what happens when we hit this flip button notice how we're just getting the body flick up now watch what happens when we combine these two so unflipped transient and tail they're separated now what's cool is we have control over them independently we could take the transient and turn it up we could process the transient separately with its own transient designer. We could saturate just the transient. Having them separate allows you to make this punchier. Now, speaking of saturation and distortion, I do want to give you guys a bonus technique, which is to saturate your sound. Now, I don't really think this is making the sound punchier because really what happens is the more you start to clip it, you're actually limiting the dynamic range or you're compressing the dynamic range, which again, I told you kind of makes something less punchy because it has less dynamics. But the nice thing is we're saturating and we're enhancing the harmonics around certain parts of the sound. And just, I find that denser sound can cut through the mix more. And I think sometimes people call that punchiness, although I wouldn't necessarily call that punchiness, but it is louder and therefore more perceptual uh, in terms of volume. So let's do that. Let's take Saturator, for example. Let's turn on soft clipping and let's just drive this more and more and more. So check this out. We were previously peaking in volume at minus seven with this 
minus six. So we'll, we'll turn it down the 0.8 to make it even. See how much perceptually louder this is because we've saturated it pretty aggressively here. And technically our sound is less dynamic because it's being pushed and pushed and therefore kind of sausaging and sausaging. But sometimes the loudness and saturation helps it cut through the mix. So some people might call this punchier because it's louder, but or at least perceptually louder, but it's not really punchier. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So that's why I kind of call this the bonus tip. That that's the sixth one because it it is and it isn't what we were talking about previously. So there we go, everyone. Those were five different ways you can make a sound punchier in Ableton. If you guys like the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and telling a friend. It would really help out the channel, but I will be back soon regardless with another tutorial. Peace.